Good day to everyone. I hope everyone is uh, healthy. I would like to welcome you once again to another edition of the BIMSYNC webinar series brought to you by Catenda, makers of BIMSYNC. Our topic today is BCF, the BIM collaboration format, and the webinar is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes. Benjamin Ajiman is my name, and I have the pleasure today of being your speaker and taking you through this webinar. I hope I get to um, enlighten you guys a little bit about the, the nitty gritties of, of this BCF format and how powerful it can be when used in the right way. My aim here is to simplify this uh, term or these three letters so that everyone here could, at the end of this webinar, have an idea of what this could mean for their own workflows, how we could implement this format, what this means for collaborating while working with the building information modeling method. As I mentioned, um, this webinar is brought to you by Catenda, makers of BIMSYNC. So, BCF, the BIM collaboration format. Let's just have a quick look at the agenda for today, in no particular order. We will go through what BCF means. We will see how it worked. I mean, I will try to explain based on my experience how this works and how I personally use BCF and how BCF uh, could support and enhance your BIM workflows and make you save a lot of time and time uh, saving time means saving money. Also, we will see how to integrate BCF into your altering or class detection software um, with a couple of examples like the connectivity to Solibri, to Revit, um, to Nevisworks and, and others. So before we tackle the, the first point on our agenda, what is BCF? Let me just give you a little bit of context. So after IFC came about as the open standard for exchanging 3D models from different authoring software, it became very clear that one of the most important aspects of collaborating in BIM is not just the models, but being able to identify areas in the models and also being able to communicate these areas to other project members so that they can act, act upon these maybe in form of a, a RFI or in form of a, a clash or so the question was then how can I communicate let's call them issues without having to send heavy models either in their native format or in an IFC format each time I do this the answer was then BCF, you just stick to the letters to try to explain it. I will just start from the back. You have you have a format, a file format, which is used in collaboration while using the BIM method. I did quite a bit of researching online to see what different definitions they have of BCF. So check Wikipedia and Building Smart and stuff like that. These are a couple uh, definitions I found. It is a structured file format suited for issue tracking with a building information model. It's a file format for communicating issues of a building information model. It allows different BIM applications to communicate model-based issues with each other. It's a format of uh, contextualized records that allows project members to communicate based on BIM. It exists to track issues as they are identified, reported on, resolved in course of a BIM process. Yeah, so these are, as I said, the definitions that I saw. And as you can see, <clears throat> I highlighted the, the most important things for me, for example. Tracking, communicating, recording, identifying. All these things, as we see, has to do with collaborating. All of these definitions are correct. So I'm going to even add a, uh, uh, my own definition of it and say uh, BCF is an open format that facilitates model-based communication of issues between different BIM applications without submitting the whole models each time. So the next point, what does BCF contain? It contains information. This information is, uh, so for example, the description, the author, the assignee, the status, type, due date, 
stuff like that. And then it contains visuals uh, in form of viewpoints based on the IFC coordinates or the model coordinates. It, it contains snapshots, screenshots, uh, markups. It also has references embedded in it. References to the 3D model, references to elements in the 3D model using the global unique ID. It has references to documents. It also could also have references to other issues. The communication uh, aspect of it is also stored in the in the format. Stuff like correspondence, comments to issues, and then obviously also the documentation, changes to the issue, amendments to the issue, who, when, what, and so on and so forth. All of this saved as an XML gives you a BCF. So as we see, a BCF contains all of these um, aspects in a very simple way so that the files are not too big to, to send back and forth. Also, what I would like to do is give you an example of what this what these contents look like in a in a in a live situation, for example, using BIMSync. We have for example here the information. Uh, we know what the, the title of the issue, the status of the issue, the type of the issue, who it's assigned to, who is requested by. We have the due dates of the issue. And then we have the visuals here as a screenshot. We also have the references here to the models and the model elements. We have the communication that takes place. Comments of this issue are saved here. And we have the documentation of the issue or the, 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 the issue history. Who did what to this issue at what time? As I said, this is just an example of how this information is put together in a, in a user-friendly user form. How does BCF work? I will just sketch a very quick uh, workflow. So we, we have our models. We are working either in our native uh, BIM applications, for example, Revit or Archicad or whatever the case may be, or I'm actually working in Solibri or I'm working directly on a, on a BIM collaboration server, such as BIMSync. I identify the subject, which is what I want to communicate Maybe it's an issue, maybe it's just a, a request for information. And I create what we call an issue out of this. So hence, I give it the description, I assign it to someone, I create a screenshot, explain exactly what I want or what I want to ask. And I assign this issue and send it then to the respective member of the project or the respective party. This party then reviews this issue and in best case resolves it. The, the author of the issue can then confirm and approve this issue, which then means the issue is then closed. We can move on to the next issue. Or he rejects and reactivates this issue. It means that we have to go back onto the drawing board. It hasn't been resolved. Right, so this is a, a simple I would say workflow, how this, uh, how working with a, with a BCF can be or how BCF works. So I would say generally there are two types of ways to kind of do this workflow. It's either a, a Firebase exchange where you create your issues, you save it as a BCF file and you send it to someone via email or yeah, on a, on a stick or something like that, which is kind of very old fashioned. And there's the second way to actually have it, have a, a BCF server that manages, saves and manages all these issues in the cloud, on a, on a cloud server, for example, on, on BIMSync. This, as supposed to the Firebase, gives you a lot of advantages. For example, you're always sure that you have one issue that is not being multiplied each time I send it to someone. And everything that happens to the issue, everyone has a transparent view of it on the collaboration platform. Yeah, so generally, I will advise against the Firebase, especially since the Firebase makes it very hard to track the issues after you have sent them out. And my personal opinion is without a PCF server, working with issues 
become very hard and cumbersome. Yeah, so finally we are approaching what well, I would say is the fun part of this webinar where we actually get to see BCF live in action. We will explore a couple uses of BCF and also uh, witness the integration into different third-party software like, for example, Revit, as I mentioned before, Neversworks, Solibri, and we will get to play around a little bit to see how, how powerful BCF could be. But before we do that, um, I would just like to say using BCF for, for example, RFIs, even if your discipline doesn't model, there are a lot of disciplines that don't need to model but have very vital information for the model. So using BCF to kind of communicate between even modeling and non-modeling parties can be very essential in a, in a project and also ensuring that the, the communication and the collaboration is at its highest level. I always like to say BIM should be inclusive. It should include all project parties and not just the, the core ones. The way I see it, RFIs could be either model-based or even as you, we, we will see with BIM Sync, you can even do RFIs or issues based on 2D documents such as PDFs or photos. Or... So as I said, we are going to see a live demo. And in this demo, we will use BIM Sync as a BCS server to connect to Revit, Neversworks and Solibri. We will use BIM Sync to create and assign issues to other project members. So for the first example, I will connect Revit to BIM Sync. So on the add-ins menu, I have BIM Sync and I will just log in using my credentials. Right, so then I will sign in now and BIM Sync opens automatically. We will just click on our demo project and go directly to the issues. Let's just return to BIM Sync, to Revit for now. So now we see we have connected directly to BIM Sync and we are seeing issues that are on BIM Sync at the moment. So these issues are on a, on a BCF server and everyone has access to these issues. And if we take a quick look back at BIM Sync, we see that we have the same issues here. Right, so what can I do with these issues directly in Revit? I could, for example, view these issues. For example, this we can see this came directly from BIMSync. And I what the plugin does, it recreates the viewpoint. So now all the markups that are here, or for example, here it says check position of sync and approve. I could check the position of the sync here in my authoring software and let's say I checked it I could then go and say um, this issue has been solved uh, sync position is perfect and add this and submit this now we could just this is like for an example of how the communication will work and if we go back now to BIM sync and check this issue with the sync which is I think is this one we will see that the issue has been set to resolve to resolve although it's been solved and contender webinar the user have just added this comment and what also could be done in Revit is I could create an RFI directly out of Revit. So I just prepare this 3D view. Let's say we are interested in this bridge and we want <clears throat> to send out an RFI to find out if the balustrading could be done in glass, for example. So let me just say RFI test balustrading. And we write and we say, please check if balustrading can be 
replaced with class. And we set a due date on this and we assign this to, let's say, structural engineer and we submit this. So we have submitted this, this RFI as PCF issue. And so we will go now on to ImSync and see that the issue or the RFI that we just created has been uploaded. And the, please check if power trading can be replaced. We could then view this directly in the model. And also add different models if kind of review this RFI entirely. And what I could also do is I could then <clears throat> write back a comment and say, yes, request is possible. Submit this. And what happens in Revit is that once we refresh the issue, we will see, yes, request is possible. So now I will use the same issue in a, a different software, this time Solibri, just to see how this issue then looks like in Solibri. For example, if the a member, a project member is using a different software. So now we just connect to BIMSync and say we want to start the synchronization. And here we see all the issues. And now if I go here, we Solibri takes us directly to this viewpoint. And we also see our comments <clears throat> and we could add comments to this or we could just leave it as it is. We could also change the status. For example, we say the status is in progress. If I mark this as ready because I have turned off the automated synchronization, it will then synchronize and then tell me BIM sync or in Revit that the issue has now been put to in progress as we can see here. The same thing will also apply if we do this in Nevisworks. For example, we have to find the right issue board, which is webinar. We have this balustrading issue here. So now if I click on this, it takes me in Nevisworks, the same viewpoint, and I get the same information about the issue that we see in Solibri, we see in Revit, and we see on BIMSync. So this shows you the integration using a PCF server and creating one issue in uh, software and seeing the same issue in other software. So that's, that's the, 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 the power behind BCF because it's an open format that can be viewed in all BIM applications. Another interesting way to use the BCF format is to create an RFI based on a 2D document. For example, I could go and just pick some 2D floor plan, for example this, and here we see a floor plan and I could add some sort of shapes to this. So I could say something is maybe wrong with here. I could add a revision cloud. I could add simple text. So please review and use this markup or this uh, request for information to create an issue. So I could create a new issue and I will call this RFI test for docs. I could assign this issue the same way I would do with any other issue. So I will just, uh, to make things quick, just say submit. And I submit this issue. And so what happens then is if we go back to our issues now, we have created an issue with uh, a 2D markup or 2D RFI. And this is also linked to the document. And this is uh, something that BIMSync does because it, it stores all the documents uh, and the issues together. This issue, I could assign this to someone and they could see directly on the document what 
questions I have or what I'm requesting. Even though this issue is just a 2D issue, we could still have a look at this issue, for example, in Revit. Because when I go on to this issue, even though it doesn't have a model link, I still have the, the, the screenshot or the snapshot describing what is being requested. So yes, that was it for our uh, live demo. We are back to the slides where I will show you just uh, a conclusion or the advantages of BCF. Um, in case you are interested in seeing the workflows that I kind of uh, showed earlier in detail format, we have, for example, webinars describing issue management. We have also webinars dis describing the direct integration into Solibri, into Neversworks, into Revit. So once you have a look at these webinars on our YouTube channel, you will um, get a better idea or a detail idea of how this workflow works. So now um, let me just list a couple of advantages or some of the advantages of PCF. It is supported by all BIM applications. It allows transparent tracking of all issues for all project parties. Um, you never have to guess if, if it's the current issue or the current BCF. Once it's on the, on the BCF server, then you know that it's, it's the current status of this issue. It allows you to perform analytics on issues so that you can analyze your projects to see how many issues, issues are open and closed and what are the often occurring issues in your project so that you could kind of be aware of that for the next project. Or each BCF has a, a global unique ID which prevents redundancy. So you always know this is the issue that we are talking about. The file size of the BCF is very small and manageable. So it's easy to kind of exchange these. As we saw, it works for models as well as for documents. So I can even use the same BCF format to make my RFIs for documents such as PDFs and so on and so forth. Um, viewing, accessing and editing BCF can be online if I'm using a BCF server like, like BIMSync. I could also create and assign issues online using, again, a BCF server like, like BIMSync. So I could do this from practically anywhere without having to have expensive or, or powerful software or a powerful machine. And the BCF, at the end of the day, is the single source of truth for all issues in a project. And now we have come to the end of this webinar and I would like to thank you for your time. Um, I wish you a pleasant day. If you need further information, you could contact me directly or you could check out our website, contender.com or check out some of our webinars and some of our tutorials on the YouTube channel. Take care and be safe. Bye.